Hello everyone, it's that college football guy here with another video. Well, it's time for that Week 8 Saturday Prediction Show for all of the games that are taking place on Saturday. And we got a bunch of games to get into, so why don't we just get into it all of them. But first, we're getting into all of that. As always, please like the video, please give it the thumbs up down below. It helps the analytics, it helps the video to be seen. Share the video, comment on the video. If you like the video, check out some of the other ones I got. And if you like it, subscribe to the channel so we can get this channel to grow. Possibly get up to 200 subscribers. Let's work our way up the channel. We're going to make this channel better, so let's get into this one first off. All right, let's look at the games. All these games are going to be Eastern Standard Time. All right, first off, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're talking UT Martin and number three, Tennessee. Tennessee out with the big win over Alabama. They're a 37.5-point favorite. I'm thankful they're playing ten, they're playing UT Martin this week and not Kentucky, because this would be a trap game, and Kentucky probably would, might, might have been able to pull off the win. But Tennessee's going to beat UT Martin, but that 37 and a half I'm a little leery of because of the of, of the hangover from the Alabama game. It may not be as good. Then we got a subscriber game: Kansas at number which is number Kansas at Baylor. Kansas is one win away from being bowl eligible. Let me say that again: Kansas is close to being bowl eligible. Baylor is at a point where if they don't win this game, they may not be bowl eligible because it does not get any easier any further down the road. So I look at this game here, I'm thinking who needs it more, who's hungrier. I think Baylor's hungrier. So I'm picking Baylor. They're a 10-point favorite. I'm going to pick Baylor to beat Kansas this game, but Kansas is going to get bowl eligible. You're going to be seeing the bowl games, and I'll be happy to talk about that when I do the bowl show in the offseason. All right, let's talk about Iowa at number two, Ohio State. Ohio State's a 29.5-point favorite. Can Iowa even score 29.5 points? Yeah, Ohio State will blow them out. Number 14, Syracuse at number 5, Clemson. Syracuse is undefeated. They're having things going, but they're on the road to Clemson. DJ's figured it out for Clemson. The offense is working, and they're a 14-point favorite at home, and I think they're going to get it done. I think they're going to beat Syracuse and remain unbeaten. Then we have one game that's kind of interesting. Number 21, Cincinnati at SMU. Cincinnati is a three-point road favorite, and I'm going like, well, this should have been bigger than that. SMU is no joke. They can sneak up on you. They can be a team that can be dangerous, but I'm still going to pick Cincinnati with a low spread. They're going to beat them. All right, 2.30 Eastern time. Oh, boy. UNLV. My guy, subscriber game. But uh, not my, we have some other subscribers who like UNLV, too. Um, UNLV has lost two in a row. What do they got to play the next game? Is it a Mount West component? No, they're at Notre Dame. Notre Dame is, needless to say, a 26-point favorite. I think that's a little bit being on the light side. They'll probably win by 40. So Notre Dame to win that game. 3 p.m. Eastern game. We've got a subscriber game. West Virginia at Texas Tech. Texas Tech has been up and down. West Virginia has been a major disappointment for where I thought they were going to be. I thought they were going to be challenging for the conference title. Instead, it's what the heck is going on here. Um, I debated back and forth on this game. Because both teams have their strengths, both teams have their weaknesses, and it seems to be a matchup and a Mets matchup. It seems to be a very, this is going to be a high-scoring game. Bet the over <laughs> if you're going to do that. I don't predict, I'm not saying bet, I'm not saying that. But the over seems like it may be going a little bit on the wayside. Texas Tech is a five-point favorite, home favorite. And I'm going, it's a little bit low. The West Virginia's coming in hot. But I was thinking, what's look at the difference between the teams and there's one thing that got on there like this got my attention over the last few weeks West Virginia's defense finally decided to show up they forced four turnovers against Baylor I think they're going to do it again and I'm picking going against the Sharks I'm picking West Virginia to beat Texas Tech all right the 3 30 p.m. Eastern games Northwestern subscriber game Northwestern at Maryland Northwestern yes I'm going to dog you for this all season long you go on the road in Ireland and beat Wisconsin, is Wisconsin, beat Nebraska, help force Scott Frost out, and then you become the only Big Ten team to lose to an FCS school. I'm going to dog you for that all year long as long as I have a game to do on you. Northwestern at Maryland. Maryland's a 14-point favorite. That seems like a bit low for me, so I'm going to pick Maryland to win that game. Then we've got one of the games that's rather surprising. Memphis at number 25, Tulane. Tulane... It's had a great season so far. They have been incredible. They have been one of the biggest surprises in college football, right up there with Kansas. And I was everybody's thinking about they're going to go with the go with the betting. The Sharks are going the other way. The betting line is set. Tulane's a seven-point favorite at home. 
but the Sharks I've been talking to is looking one simple thing. Memphis has lost two games. But you know they've lost their two games by one point each in a combined four overtimes? They could very easily be undefeated too. They have won 13 of the last 15 games, and unfortunately for Tulane, they came in saying, traditions reversed, we got this. On to the next one. Saying that before you play Memphis. Saying you've already beaten them, being that arrogant, being that cocky. That is a big mistake. I've seen teams do that too many times this year and catch the L, and I think Tulane's going to catch the L and fall from the undefeated and fall from the top 25. I'm picking Memphis to get the win. Let's put that over there out the way. Let's go to the rest of the 330 games here. We're talking Boston College at number 13, Wake Forest. Is the Boston College coaching staff going to make it to the end of the year? Because I'm seriously beginning to wonder as bad as their offense is. Wake Forest is a 20.5 point favorite, and that seems a little low, but I'm picking Wake to win that one. Then we got an interesting game. Number nine, UCLA, and number 10, Oregon. Odds were thinking UCLA is undefeated. Oregon's only got the one loss to Georgia. I mean, they should be on there, but Oregon's a six point home favorite. And they're going like, well, UCLA should be doing pretty good here. Well, you understand, like, UCLA got figured out. You throw on them, they can't stop you. They got the 87th ranked pass defense, and it was high at the beginning of the season, and it's progressively getting worse. And Bo Nix, who knew Bo Nix could be a quarterback? At Auburn, he absolutely stunk up the joint. But he's averaging 270 yards a game passing at Oregon. He has become an elite player. And you know what? I'm going to call for Oregon to pull the mild upset. Number 10 upsets number 9 at home. And Oregon's going to win the game. Here. Number 20, Texas at number 11, Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State has been hit by the injury bug and hit badly. And number 20, Texas, is a five-and-a-half-point road favorite. That's kind of a surprise. And they're going like, well, what's the reason for this? Oklahoma State's injury. I'm going to get the names right here. Preston Wilson, their starting center, actually their backup center and the starting center were urged in the TCU game, and so was wide receiver Jordan Bray. Wilson and Bray are both questionable. If they need the one to play, especially Wilson, that is a major loss. And right now... I just, I don't know. I'm trying to fight off a sneeze. <laughs> but uh, here's the one stat for you. Oklahoma State's defense last year with Jim Knowles. Everybody remembers that. They were beating people up with their defense last year. And Texas played Oklahoma State last year. And here's a little food for thought. reason why I'm picking Texas to actually beat Oklahoma State. Dijon Robinson... Bijan had uh, played last year against a Jim Knowles defense, right? So what did he do? He had 173 yards rushing on a Jim Knowles defense. What are they going to do without that defense? They've been suspect all year. I'm picking, I'm picking Texas to upset Oklahoma State. I'm going to go with it. Now comes another game here that some people don't get. I do. Number seven, Ole Miss at LSU. And some people are going, what are the Sharks in the sports books talking about? They got LSU as a one-point favorite? Oh, they should win by 30. No, they're not. The Sharks pick LSU, the books pick LSU, and I'm picking LSU. And I'm going to tell you why. LSU, here's a simple fact the matter is. Who have they beaten? Who have they beaten on the road? I'm going to give you their schedule for this season, okay? At home, beat Troy. Troy, 28 to 10. Home against Central Arkansas, 59 to 3, FCS. On the road to Georgia Tech with Jeff Collins at coach with that anemic offense, they beat him 42 to nothing. They're home against Tulsa and won 35 27. 35 27 against Tulsa. You're at home for homecoming against Kentucky. You win 22 to 19. You go at road on Vandy. Win 52 to 28. You gave up 28 points to Bandy. And then you go at home and you beat Auburn 48 to 34. You give up 38 for, 34 points to Auburn. Who have you beaten that's got a defense? Who have you beaten? Now you gotta face LSU on the road. The sports books and the sharks are going with me. They think Ole Miss is fool's gold. They think they're overrated and overhyped. And I'm one of them. And I'm picking LSU to upset number seven and say bye bye to your undefeated and bye bye your possibly your shot at winning the West, winning the West Division. But if you beat Bama, all bets are off. Now, let's go to the six 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 thirty Eastern games. Um, 
as I mentioned earlier today about the passing of a San Jose State player, the San Jose State New Mexico State game has been postponed. They will not be playing the game. It's going to be made up at a later date. Instead, they're going to be holding a Cadillac vigil during the game when the game would have been played. So let's you can and so let's just keep everybody's thoughts and prayers with the family, friends, and teammates. And everyone involved. Now let's get to. Fresno State at New Mexico. New Mexico has struggled on offense. Fresno State's finally figuring things out. They're a nine and a half point road favorite, and I think they're going to win that game. 7 p.m. Eastern. Number 24, Mississippi State at number six, Alabama. Alabama's a 21 point favorite. Some people think Mississippi State is going to catch them by surprise. Alabama's going to come in pissed at home. Sorry, Mississippi State. You're getting the bricks blown off of you. You're going to get beat up. Now you got one thing here. Subscriber game. Boise State at Air Force. Air Force coming off the thrashing of UNLV the previous week. They're one and a half point home favorite. I'm not buying it. Ever since Boise State fired their head coach, just the head coach, fired their offensive coordinator, brought Dirk Cutter in to be the new offensive coordinator. They are 3 0 since then, 2 0 in the Mountain West, and they're out Air Forcing Air Force. They are running the same kind of a triple option type off, I mean, run dominant offense. And their defense is picked up. They're playing well. And I think they're going to beat Air Force. They're going to pull off the upset right based on the sports spread. They're going to beat Air Force. One game. Ooh, I forgot. I skipped the game. I am totally apologized to everybody. I skipped the game. And that's 4 p.m. Eastern. That's Arizona State at Stanford. Stanford is a two-point favorite at home. And the thing is about the Stanford, they beat Notre Dame. Arizona State beat Washington. Everybody's going, man, that's some great games. Stanford beat Orange. Stanford ran the ball 40 times against Notre Dame. The whole thinking is this. Everybody in the books is picking Stanford to win for one reason. Shaw is better than Aguayo. That's the only reason they're giving Stanford the bet. They think of the coaching decisions and the fact of special teams and little things. So I'm going to go with Stanford too. But don't be surprised anybody if Arizona State beats them. Do not be surprised at all. So let's go into some more games here. Put the next page of paper away. More, I have a 7.30 Eastern game. We're talking Minnesota at number 16, Penn State. Penn State is a four-and-a-half point form favorite. Kind of low, don't you think? Your 16th team in the country. They've Minnesota lost their last two games because their starting quarterback and their starting running back went out. That's the Injuries is what killed them. They might get some players back. That's going to be a big difference in this game. Minnesota, here's the difference in this game. And I'm calling for the upset. I'm picking Minnesota upset Penn State. Why am I doing it? Minnesota is a run-dominant team. Even without their star back, they are a run-dominant team. Penn State absolutely sucks against the run. You give up 400 yards rushing to Michigan. You've given up a lot of yards rushing throughout the year. Against run-dominant teams, you fail. Well, guess what? I think you're going to fail again. I'm picking Minnesota to upset Penn State. Now we got the 8 p.m. Eastern games. Number 17, Kansas State at number 8, TCU. This is a great game. Uh, TCU undefeated coming in. Everybody's the three and a half points, and some people are picking TCU to come in and blow out Kansas State. I'm not one of them. This is the definition of a letdown hangover game. This is the definition of it. You just finished off a double overtime thriller over Oklahoma State. Okay, we just got Kansas State. They only got a loss. We'll give them their second loss. No problem. And there's some TCU players online talking exactly like that. That's another example of catching the L. You understand that Kansas State's only loss was a 17-10 loss to now number 25 Tulane? That's their only loss. They lost by a touchdown to a ranked team. They're playing a lot better. TCU is going with here all this. They have all the momentum. They have everything else. I think this is a letdown. I think they're going to overestimate Kansas State. They think they're going to get out hot. I think they're going to come out sluggish. And I'm picking Kansas State to pull the upset. All right, we have a subscriber game. Colorado and Oregon State. Colorado with a new coaching staff at Oregon State at home, kicking it going. You're a 23-and-a-half point favorite, and I don't see any reason to disagree with it. And then a 10.30 Eastern game, we have another subscriber game. San Diego State at Nevada. Oh, boy. Two of the worst offenses in FBS. San Diego State is 127th in pass offense, and Nevada is 115th. Both teams suck in offense. 
San Diego State has the better defense. They also have a better kicking game. They routine. They have kickers. They have their their special teams is the difference in this game and their defense. San Diego State's a seven point favorite, and I think they're going to cover that and they're going to beat Nevada. That's my predictions for this video. So tell me, what do you think down in the comments down below? What did I get right? What did I get wrong? Tell me what you think is going to happen with all of this. So, what's going to be your favorite game for this Saturday? So, let me know down in the comments. Always please, everyone, like. Tell them a thumbs up if you like the video. Comment on the video. Helps with the interactions. Thumbs up. I help. It helps out. Share this video. Subscribe to the channel. Everything helps the channel to grow. Thank you, everyone, for watching the video. I'll have another video coming up a little bit later on after the games. i got some errands to run today so I can get some stuff done, hopefully, before the start of kickoff. But uh, thanks, everybody, for watching the video. Please be safe out there, and please be good to each other.